In this tutorial, I'll cover two cases for rectangle collision, which is point inside rectangle and rectangle versus rectangle test, which is also known as AABB test, or axis aligned bounding box test. So I'll go ahead and delete everything that we had in our previous tutorial except the clearing the canvas with white color and I'll go ahead and refresh this in the browser so we have a clean slate the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new file and call it rectangle JS and this file will contain all of our rectangle functions and of course I'll drag it into the code editor view and I will create a new class called rectangle and we'll create a constructor function that will take X Y width and height of this rectangle of course we will assign these basic parameters within our constructor and and just as with any other object that we have created that we were drawing on the screen we're going to add the draw function so we can actually visualize the rectangle and we'll provide a color here and we'll close so again we're going to draw this rectangle on canvas so I'm going to use JFX and every time we begin a new shape we have to start with begin path that's just how canvas works on canvas we draw rectangles using the rect function so let's go ahead and do that and we also need to determine the color of the line stroke color or actually style and this will equal to color and we actually need to call stroke method and now just to test this out let's go back into our game library and let's add rectangle to the list of our components for our game so far and here we'll create a new rectangle let's say we'll do this at a random position so maybe 640 by 480 and now we'll simply draw actually we also need to add the width and height which we'll use the same values here and let's draw a rectangle with a blue outline I don't want to see all of them we have to actually delete or temporarily remove this background code here and so I will refresh the browser and this is what we'll have of course you can add more rectangles of different colors for example you can create a yellow rectangle this is the second rectangle and let's see what happens if we refresh and so here we have rectangles of two different colors so we just made sure that this works and we are ready to start implementing collision detection for rectangles for now I'll simply erase everything that we have just made and I'll make sure that the canvas is always cleared to white background so I'll save this and refresh again so we have a clean slate here again and we're going to write some functions for collision detection
first test we want to add to our new rectangle class is the point test and I'll use the same function name that we used for our circle class uh, which also had a point inside function and this function will take the point coordinates and within this function we'll test whether that point falls within the rectangle. In order to do that we need to make sure that the px is greater or equal the x coordinate of this box that we're testing against. We also need to make sure that the px is less or equal to this x, the box's x position plus the box's width. And now we need to do exactly the same thing for the y coordinate. This time it's y. And this height, because we're checking for vertical now. And we can do it like this, maybe even. And so if all of these tests actually return true, we can safely return the true value. And we, if we end up here, we're obviously going to return false. And let's go ahead and try this out on our game environment. So let's create a rect that will be positioned at 100, 100, and 300 in width, 200 in height. Let's draw this rect in, let's say, blue color. I'm going to save and refresh. PX is not defined. And that is probably, I always make this same exact mistake. Uh, we need to actually create a function. And save. Okay, so here we have our rectangle. Now I'm going to add a new point. And I'll create it using the point class that we created earlier in the series. And I'll use the mouse coordinates for this point. And again, mouse library is located here and basically it tracks mouse coordinates. Uh, in order to start doing that we simply need to initialize the mouse object and determine which element in our HTML code we should be tracking within. And so the mouse coordinates will be limited to that rectangle that was specified here. And so because we create a point on in each uh, frame here of our game, which is probably not the greatest idea, but all of my tutorials are based on simplicity of explanations. So let's draw this point by assigning maybe radius 2 and in red color. So I'll refresh the browser once again. And we have a red point following the mouse. So we'll use this point inside function now to test whether this mouse cursor falls within this rectangle. And we'll do that by checking if rect point inside and we'll pass the ptx and pty coordinates. And if that's true, we'll draw a red rectangle instead of the blue one. Let's save this and refresh the browser. And so as you can see, our test works. Whenever the point is inside, the rectangle is red. When it's outside, the rectangle is back to the blue color. And you can download the source code for this tutorial, which should be visible on the screen right now or in this video's description. One thing in addition we can add to this function, or rather improve point inside. By going in here, we can check whether 
how many parameters were passed. For example, the default is 2, but if we have argument length equals 1, which if only one parameter was passed, then what we can do is we can say that px is equal pxx and py is equal pxy. So imagine if we passed only one parameter as a point object. And so this is what this line does. It identifies how many parameters were passed. If it's the default, nothing in this scope will execute. But if we only, if this function receives only one argument, then we'll rewrite px into whatever stored in this first argument that was passed. Obviously, it would probably be a point, so we access points x coordinate and then we a access points y coordinate. So it's kind of like rewriting px and py variables from one object being passed into this function, if that's the case. And what this allows us to do is we can erase this and simply pass pt. So I'm going to save this. And let's see. Of course, it's not working the first time. but if we do indeed go in here to investigate what's happening here is that we should probably add these as variables because otherwise they're trapped in the scope because no variable um, definition was present in here and so we'll go back here we say refresh and it's still not working, so that wasn't the problem. Clearly, uh, we do have argument 1 equals 1. Uh, PXX, PXY. We are passing the point, so this should be working. And PT draw. Let's see. We can convert back to for a second this works so when we're passing just one pt it should definitely be there px equals px pxy py actually what I can try and do here maybe rewrite this as a point pt equals new point pxx pxy and from this here we can use the pt object let's try this one out and now it works so it, it was just a matter of creating variables a certain way and again we are only using the point name which makes this function a lot more cleaner and so thanks for watching this tutorial we're moving on to the next part where we will test rectangle versus rectangle collision